So from uh, India and Indonesia, we now finally get to Hong Kong. And we have two case sharing from Hong Kong. The first one is from uh, Gigi, Gigi Lo. Uh, uh, you are still a student of CUHK, right? Yes. So Gigi Lo is actually a CUHK uh, sociology PhD student. And uh, uh, she also has a very cool project that she will tell us about. Okay, the time is yours. Okay, hello, uh, thank you, Jack. Um, I need to check the time. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Gigi. I'm from Hong Kong, from CHK, and I'm also from the organization called Translate for Her. So let me take a look of everyone here. Okay, so may I know that is here any Pakistani or people who speak Urdu? No, that's great. Okay, so um, to start uh, my presentation, I would like to have a game. So you know what we are doing and what problem we are uh, handling and what's the solution. Okay, because no one can speak Urdu here, I would like you to read this language and tell me what it is. It's just a sentence, but telling you a very important message. If you miss it, you will have consequence. Have a guess. Something about 2017. Yes, sure. <laughs> and 14 also. <laughs> Another guess. No, okay, let's get the answer. Ooh, please submit your application form before uh, to, uh, October, 14th of October 2017. So maybe this application is very important, getting money or getting uh, some um, admission to the school, maybe, right? So if you get a notice or school notice or applying for something important, but you cannot read it, you are going to miss something big. Okay, next one, because we're in Hong Kong and many non-Chinese um, people here, non-Chinese uh, speaking people here. Ha, huh. Chinese now. <laughs> what it is? For Chinese, please, please keep quiet. <laughs> okay, so what it is? It's numbers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah man, it's a, uh, 10,000 something, huh? So you may be surprised of uh, renting a house or paying a bill, but numbers are written in traditional Chinese characters. Then you cannot know what price you're going to pay or whether it's the right price you're paying. So it is exactly the situation our users or our sister facing every day. So uh, our group is called Translate for Her. And translate for her, you can guess, we're doing translation for ethnic minority women in Hong Kong. So in this context, ethnic minority women are, are people who cannot speak Chinese, who are not Chinese. And people from India, Pakistani, Nepalese, or Sri Lanka, and Indonesia, and Philippines, or America, or other in, uh, countries, they have families here, and they may have children studying in the mainstream school. So every day, they got a lot of information which is written in Chinese, or see a lot of the notices every day. Then, so translate for her, we have some vision and missions. Um, we are a transcultural community. We uh, want to break the gender inequality. We want to have eco share. Well, I will explain it more to you. And we also do mutual help and uh, crowdsourcing. Um, through the WhatsApp. So, um, what do we do and why we found this organization and what problem are we tackling? So as you experienced, we're tackling a language barrier in Hong Kong. So, um, in 2014, I had a friend who is a Pakistani called Bushra. <laughs> and Bushra and I was friends for many years. But then, uh, after having WhatsApp, she, she, one day she WhatsApp me, messaged me, and sent me a receipt of her um, house uh, rental arrangement. She wanted to know the price, um, whether it's um, like consistent in what the, the rent she's paying to the owner. So she sent me the receipt and asked me about the number. The number you've seen in the uh, last few slides. Uh, which is written in Chinese character. So even for numbers, she cannot understand. And I was shocked at that moment. Oh, how come someone cannot read the numbers in a receipt? That is so close to her everyday life. Um, 
Then uh, I, I stopped because I'm studying sociology. So I start have sociological imagination and thinking that if my friend, a Pakistani friend in Hong Kong, have this problem in uh, reading Chinese, then all other um, sister, non-Chinese sister in Hong Kong will face the same problem. Then I start going to NGO, talking with other non-Chinese sister and some staff, and asking how they handle the translation uh, issue. Then some sister told me that, okay, I rely on my um, six-year-old kid to tell me what's the notice on the building, in the building post. Maybe it's uh, the, as the stop of um, water supply. Or she need to wait her husband coming back home because maybe her husband know how to speak Cantonese. So after coming back, her husband can call the uh, security guard in the building and tell her about that message. Then um, I start thinking that, okay, women in Hong Kong, uh, yeah, an ethnic minority women in Hong Kong need to rely on someone in reading Chinese or understanding the message. It's not okay for me. Then uh, I asked them how, okay, besides friends or families, uh, do you know any translation service provided by NGO or the government in Hong Kong? Um, they said, no, even there is provision. They don't know. They think that it's not user-friendly or they don't know how to use that. So um, we start um, creating a project and we found that actually migrant women in Hong Kong, they rely a lot on networks, people they know. So they can trust that network is uh, reliable or someone can help them. And also, uh, they need some um, um, resources that's available not in a fixed spot. For example, if uh, you are living in Causeway Bay, but the center is in uh, CUHK, Sha Tin, then you need to travel for an hour to get uh, someone to help you to translate things. It's, um, it's not useful for them because most of them are mothers. They are occupied by their uh, Kara family role. Then, so we want to find a solution that is user-friendly. Everyone can use it and without time and place um, boundary limitation. So uh, finally, we come up with an idea. Uh, everyone has smartphone, although some people don't, but uh, most of our users, our friends have smartphone, and they have WhatsApp. And even for some uh, uh, ladies who are low educated or they're poor, they still know how to uh, use WhatsApp to chat with friends. So you don't need to learn a new application. We don't need to create a new application. Okay, so we start using WhatsApp, creating WhatsApp group. And then we invite, I, uh, we ask our um, non-Chinese friends, uh, ladies, to invite their friend to join the group. And we also invite other Chinese uh, voluntary translator to join the group. So joining the group at least, uh, we are not uh, building a platform only in solving uh, translation problem. But we are, we are building platform to, uh, we are building platform, but at the same time, a community. So people can trust each other, people can help each other out, they can share, and they can be friends. Because as a migrants, what you lack, not only you are facing language barrier, not only you are um, uh, lacking of money or income, not only you are a migrant, but you are lacking of social capital or social network. Maybe you just have friends who, who share the same background with you. So you somehow can help each other, but the help doesn't, um, um, like, cannot help you a lot because you don't know, you don't know Chinese, your friend don't know Chinese too. So we want to build up a community that uh, people are from different backgrounds. In this case, it's the cultural background. Like, I speak Chinese, I speak uh, Cantonese, but uh, so that I can share my language capital with other non-Chinese speaking ladies, then I can uh, tell them what to notice about, but at the same time, uh, through this interaction, I learn a lot about their situation. They can share um, their cultures or even their language with us. So we build this community that at least one person know another person. You are not adding into a strange uh, WhatsApp group. You may think people are deceiving you, adding you into a WhatsApp group, then you will soon quit. But in this group, you, are, you know someone and you trust the community that will help you and you can share what you have. So we built up this WhatsApp group. Now we have uh, in total 13 WhatsApp groups. 
and we have the non-Chinese uh, users more than 200, and all of them are ladies, because we want to create a, a female safe environment. Uh, for some ethnic group uh, ladies, they worry that if there are male there, uh, men there, they would, uh, how to say, they would be uh, uh, gossiped by others. So uh, they want a safe environment that only have female, and they, they dare to say something or express uh, what they need or request help in the community. And now we have um, two, uh, more than 250 volunteers working in the WhatsApp group, different uh, WhatsApp group, and uh, they can translate from Chinese to English, and some of them can translate from English to Urdu, Nepalese, and other languages. So uh, not only Chinese is the volunteer, but also other ethnic groups people are uh, helping in this community. And one thing we, we, I want to say is that building such platform, in compare with the um, two cases before my presentation, they are a big cooperative. And also, they have many people. They have high technology. But my, I think in my case, uh, I want to show you that everyone can use the low technology, like WhatsApp, and very in very low cost. But by uh, networking people and drawing people together, they can do something meaningful and helpful to everyday life. Uh, our group, um, we have users using this group every day. And, and we've, even that, uh, after this, we have chance to meet each other and then we become friends. And this is how community work. We use t technology to um, responding to people's real need and building relationship and community. And by doing this building relationship, uh, we also, and then we will find new needs from people. For example, our users told us that they want to learn Cantonese. Then again, we use WhatsApp group to teach Cantonese. And some of them help translating our course material into their own languages. So for those who cannot understand English, they can also uh, learn Cantonese through this translation. And also through this group, we disseminate community information. We refer users to other NGO and to get access to other services. So we want to build a platform uh, not only doing translation, but a platform connect, connecting our users to the Hong Kong society and connecting them to other service providers or people who concern, or even they have chance to um, get their voice heard in the government, in the legislative council. So, um, yes, um, this is what I want to share today. I guess I don't have more time. But if you want to like have exchange with me and talk more, then uh, we we maybe can meet each other later today. And I hope if it is because it's a very easy way to build a community to tackle the problem. I think many problem in the society. So if you would like to use the model, build your own WhatsApp group and handle the problem in your country, in your region, uh, feel free to use it. No license. Of course, you can ask me, and we can share each other's stories. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yiji. When I said this morning that in CUHK, uh, as uh, uh, old ghosts, okay, professors, we are pushed forward by our students. I'm not, I was not uh, joking, okay. You now see Gigi is doing really fantastic work, okay, and uh, with her intervention. And uh, I just want to add one very little bit of, uh, uh, you know, background, you know, for those of you who come from outside Asia. If you pay attention to the big, Big story about WhatsApp in Asia these days. If you follow American, European, Australian media, okay, usually it's just one thing. It's about fake news. So now, like uh, outside, uh, like uh, WhatsApp, especially in India, it's been known as the the place where you see fake news and uh, uh, rumor mongering. But here, I think uh, Gigi's okay, example, okay, she explained it very clearly, is that uh, it can be repurposed by women by marginalized groups, you know, by, you know, people who have uh, real needs, okay? So that's uh, 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 very different from the mainstream uh, Western media story about WhatsApp, okay, in Asia.